It's two o'clock and the code board for the city of Tarpon Springs is now in session. Bobby, would you call the roll, please? Um, just one moment. Sorry. Okay. Everybody's a little waterlogged. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're calling for your roll call, correct, miss? Yes. Miss Wade? Present. Mr. Refugio is excused and absent today. Mr. Weeks? Here. Mrs. Tellyar? Here. Mrs. Archer? Here. Dr. Matea? Here. Mr. Ogle? Here. This completes your roll call. Thank you. If you'll please stand, we'll read the invocation and we'll have the pledge. <sighs> Our Father, we seek blessings on the tasks before us. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. We pray that our work this afternoon will find favor in your sight. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It is the intention of this board to promote, protect, and improve the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Tarpon Springs by enforcing an equitable, effective, and inexpensive method of enforcing various codes within the city of Tarpon Springs. Any aggrieved party may appeal a final administrative order of this board to the circuit court. Such appeal shall be filed within 30 days of the execution of the order to be appealed. Florida Statute 286.0105 requires any party appealing a decision of this board to have a record of the proceedings to support such an appeal. And just so that you understand the procedures, first the city will present its witnesses and exhibits after which the alleged violator is able to ask the city's witnesses questions. Secondly, the alleged violator is allowed to make a presentation and present his or her witnesses and exhibits. Then the city can question the alleged violator's witnesses. After both rounds of testimony, both on the part of the city and the alleged violator, each party is asked to give a closing argument first by the city and then the alleged violator. After those three steps are taken, the board will close the public hearing portion to discuss it and take appropriate action. Before we begin, anyone who's going to be a witness will need to stand and be sworn in by the secretary of the board. So if you're gonna testify or bring any evidence, and that includes our staff, you'll need to raise, stand, raise your hand, and Bobby will swear you in. So if you're going to talk, please be sworn in. Please. And then she's going to swear you in. Do you swear to testimony about the Gills Whole Truth and nothing but the truth today? I do. do. Thank you and be seated. If you have a cell phone, and that includes me, <laughs> please turn your phone off because unless you're getting a transplant you better not have it ringing <laughs> <laughs> thank you There's no biz new business to be heard at this time. We have... S the first thing we have is the affidavits of compliance. Com of compliance will be, the affidavits of compliance will be the first thing that today. And the first case is case 23-8001. Zero 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 six five, Amirhouses.com, 
709 West Bayshore Drive. Is anyone here for that case? This is a, a violation of the tourist home and the city will present. For Mike Rolleston today, he is out on vacation. So uh, I, I know it's short notice, but he did request this vacation prior to being hired with us. So that being said, he will be back at the next one, but I'm filling in for him uh, today. Thank you for coming. Yes, ma'am. So this is an affidavit of compliance for case 23-8000065. Uh, 709 West Bay Shore Avenue um, that on March 15th I inspected the property and through our resources uh, that it had came into compliance and I do have the original documents that I'd like to introduce to the board and into the evidence. Um, we'll accept those into evidence. There's no one here to object. And looking at this, there are no fines uh, that were ever due. They came into compliance before uh, your fine dates. Board have any questions for Officer Boone? Looking under the uh, number four motion in this case. So this will be an affidavit of compliance with no fines due. Do I hear such a motion from the board? Um, just, Madam Chair, there's a attached to this that's not the same number as we're working on. That would be the addendum. Oh, that's for the second page. That's fine, but I'm just we, pointing that out. We're concerned because it has a different address and a different type of uh, Yeah, it is name. the document that's in our packet, but it may not be. Yeah, that's a different one. What document is he referring to? One page. Hinton is the we one only need on. the one that we have. That's the yeah. one page. If you'll see it in your tab, number one, it'll be the first page affidavit of compliance for... It's 1880009147. 709 Bayshore. Oh, so four. under your first tab, turn one more page. First page under tab one. It's right there. Yes, the problem one. is that that addendum is in the, uh, and, here it is. In the and here's the original that gets filed. I'm just saying up. what I got was, it got yes. stuck to it. Okay. Don't worry. Sorry for the confusion. We oh, stuck two pages together. We want you guys to understand just as well as I do. So what is this one? Thank you, ma'am. Please, but that's okay. 
here? Mm -hmm. No, this is colossal. It is something we just and, uh, and we still have one bit of confusion after um, that page in our tab number one right. is Tina Hinton's case. That's right. Is that, that's, that's, that's is that related? Second, that's the one that's the amendment. Addendum. So. Addendum. So what confused us was the two addresses. One says Bayshore and one says Royal Drive. Correct. So Royal Drive will be your, the addendum that's going to be your next case ah. for affidavit of compliance. Even okay. though it's under tab one, that's what we got right. mixed that's up on. Right, that's the okay. all our affidavits of compliance. Right. Okay. okay. It just wasn't separately, it's just Tabbed. added on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think, does everybody on the board understand now? Yep. We're dealing with, with this case uh, 0065, is that yes. correct? Yes. And the address is correct for 709 Bayshore. It's listed as Amir Houses, right. and they are in compliance. Yes. And I so, assume, I guess that's the wrong word, but looking at the affidavit, there is no fine involved. Correct. correct. Right. Yes. Thank you. So we can just do a simple motion. Correct, number four. Okay. My packet's all messed up. If, the, if you'd like to make motion number four. I'll move. I move. In case number 23-8000065, uh, property located at 709 West Bay Shore Drive, Tarpon Springs, uh, 34685. Uh, uh, let's see. Correction, 34689. I'm sorry, yes, 34689. <clears throat> uh, under the name of Hinton, Tina Hinton, is in compliance for correcting the violations mm -hmm. and accept their, uh, and, uh, and we accept the ad Need to be affidavit corrected. of no, compliance. It's, it's under Amir House. amirhouses.com, yes. LLC is it's the name. It's a different number. Hinton is the reading. addendum. So it's case number 238065. Oh, right. But Hinton's number is different. We'll just correct it for the record that it's amirhouse.com okay. uh, LLC, and then we just need the rest of the motion. Sorry, I don't have the name. Um, uh, anyway, it is in compliance for correcting the violation and to accept the affidavit of compliance. Second. Thank you, and it has been seconded. Roll call, please, Bobby. Mr. Ogle? Yes. Dr. Matea? Aye. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mrs. Telliar? Yes. Mr. Weeks? Yes. Ms. Wade? Yes. The motion carries. Okay, now. So now just to clarify, we have the addendum is in your packet under the first tab, and then it should be two pages starting off with uh, the addendum and saying Tina Hinton, and uh, and then the affidavit of compliance is the next page. So should this be done as a separate affidavit of compliance? Yes. This, yes. This should be one um, done as a separate one. Yes. Right. And there are no fines, but this all, also. That is correct. It says okay. no. All right. So. Do you want to hear from the city? Also under just so the crew here is ready. Also behind your tab one is a second case and it's listed as Tina Hinton, case number 18-8000914608 Royal Drive. And we'll hear from the city. Thank you again. I'm Thank you again. I'm Corporal Boone, Tarpon Springs Police Department. This is also a case uh, 16 eight zero 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 nine one four this case is at 608 Royal Drive as of April 3rd 2024 
myself, uh, I'm sorry, Mike Rolleston went to the property and watched all the animals be loaded up and taken out of the city uh, so they are no longer there. This is the Tina Hinton case, but there are fines due. Okay. She will be coming back for a reduction later. This is to put her in compliance as of April 3rd, 2024, which would be, that's when her fines would have stopped. And it's up to her now to follow up if she would like to do a reduction. And I need to make one clerical note. I believe he said it was case 16 dash and it's case 18 dash. Correct. It's 18 914 And she has previously been found in, in violation. So now we are just making her in compliance. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. There's no one here for that case, correct? She's not. Thank you. And I just need to add on the record that my firm at one point was involved in this case. Uh, we do not have a conflict. Thank you. How many days was she in non-compliance? In non-compliance? Because fines are due, you said, right? Cool. When, when was the date she was to come into compliance? How? Compliance date was November 16, 2018. That I, I don't have before me. Okay, that's okay. fine. Yeah, we're not going to ask for any fine today. Right. The fine will exist and come for it'll come back before you on a reduction. <laughs> she would have to bring it back for a reduction. If not, she just pays her fine. Okay. But if she is in compliance as of April 3rd, 2024. And I have the original compliance letter here that I'd like for you guys to see and offer it to Bobby. We've never had a case where we found them in compliance right. with a fine, that we have but no amount. Right. So we're a little unsure how to record that. Because you still have to record the fine, don't you? Right. I think we can do motion six. And when it says, um, did the correct did correct the violation but did not pay the fine amount to be determined at, right the amount will be determined thank you six with a blank yeah. i'm moving case number one eight eight zero 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 nine one four Tina Hinton six zero eight Royal Drive. Um, did correct the violations that did not pay the fine, and to accept the affidavit of compliance. Second. Roll call, Bobby. Mr. Ogle. Yes. Dr. Matea. Aye. Mrs. Archer. Yes. Mrs. Telliar. Yes. Mr. Weeks. Yes. Ms. Wade. Yes. Please your roll call. There are no cases for consent. We have two cases which have requested a fine reduction. And so that we're all understanding, uh, Mr. Salzman's gonna read the rules for us to grant a fine reduction and I will remind you that in your packet, you, you were also given the rules by the city for requesting a fine from the code investment in, in code enforcement board. It, it, part of the finding procedure or the request procedure says within 60 days of the affidavit of compliance, you must submit a written request. It tells you how to address the letter and what needs to be included. And part of that includes to prove a hardship. It is recommended that you include the last two years tax returns and a previous financial, a personal financial statement. And then we can see if these conditions apply and pursue it further. And he's gonna read us the legal.
as, as was stated, um, <clears throat> within 60 days of the affidavit of compliance, you have to apply to submit a written request to the Code Enforcement Board for reconsideration of a fine. You, had, you need to address in the letter the Code Enforcement Board and sign it, so that would be before the board properly. The letter must include conclusive evidence showing extreme or undue hardship in the payment of the fine or a situation which prevented you from bringing that property into compliance when the time period established by the board's order. To prove a hardship, it is recommended that you include the last two years of tax returns in a personal financial statement, and this concerns the financial aspect of the hardship. The board shall make its determination based solely upon your letter. You may appear at the hearing as the code, at, as the code board members may have additional questions to you, but you will not be able to make a statement in your defense. The code board inspector may submit in writing information regarding the case that he feels is important in order for the board to make its decision, including but not limited to the costs incurred by the city. And we were given one document. Well, I should call the case first. Yep. This is case C2 in your book. It's 22 slash 8 0 0 0 0 0 2 0. Betty Colossi, East Lemon Street. This is a vacant lot. Is anyone here for that property? If you'd come down and tell us your connection with the property, and then we can hear from you as well. Yes. Although we just said you can't testify. Well, the board can, if, the, if you so choose, want additional information or that explains anything that was put in the statement. Okay. Because I think it's somewhat difficult for individuals to uh, put all the information in the statement. And so that's why we'll give them an opportunity to clarify after you hear it from the city. All right, so he's gonna speak, we can ask questions, then you get a turn and we'll ask you questions and we'll figure okay. this out. Thank you for coming. Tell me what your name is. Uh, Abel. Abel? Yes, I'm uh, Betty's husband. Alrighty. Okay. I'll Again, I'm Corporal Anthony Boone with the Tarpon Springs Police Department. This is case 22-8000-0020, East Lemon Street, property owner Betty Colossi here in Tarpon Springs. The violation uh, was a 105.1, 1. 1. a permit required uh, for the property, 8-52, a nuisance prohibition and 141.00 storm water management. Uh, in this case, the property owner did get the property in compliance February 16th of 2024. Fines were due. This is here before you for a fine reduction because this was brought before you guys last code board and uh, the Mr. Abel uh, Colossi gave you guys a sheet of paper to review and we brought it back because you had more questions for Mr. Abel Colossi. He is here to present his side of the case, but the property is in compliance and still in compliance as of today after I inspected it. But it was out of compliance for a year. From 3 4 12 of 22 mm -hmm. to 3 9 of 23. Correct. 331 days. Correct. All right. Does anyone have a. Uh, do you have a question for Officer Boone? No, no question. Okay. Um, you get to present your case. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Um, I just thought that the fine it wasn't that bad, you know? I, I went back to Brazil for four months, but I wasn't aware that I was, that the fine was already um, accruing. Every, every, accruing every day. So when I came back, I got a letter, I said, wow, it's almost 10,000. Uh, I am guilty, you know, it was, uh, we left some, some pallets, some machinery there. <clears throat> uh, but the, the biggest reason that I'm asking to, to help with the fine is because I want to put my dream building there and I, I'm trying to use some of the money for the impact fees. 
Uh, so any help that you can do it, you know, I have, I want to put this, this building. You have something you want to present to the board? Yeah. We're really not supposed to entertain new evidence at this it's, time. I think it's just showing that he's putting, he's yeah, planning it, on putting a building on. It's just showing you what his plans are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but. Yeah. I'll accept that. So it's not that. new evidence. It's just kind of yeah. just giving you an opportunity to see that. Absolutely. The, our attorney is going to ask you a few questions, and the yeah, board yeah, yeah. has several questions for you. When you started cleaning up the uh, property, how long did it take you once you started? Uh, one day. One week? One day. One day. Yeah. Do you have a question? I do. Think? Okay, I do. Did you understand the instructions regarding? how to apply for a fine reduction. What we've been learning is that you had to provide financial statements saying that yeah. this was a financial hardship to pay the fine. And I don't see anything that you've submitted regarding that. Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I'd like to be honest, right? Uh, I, I have a very successful business. And I, the problem is not the money, you know? I was just really, with the good faith, try to see if I can use the fine towards my impact fees. Uh, if I bring my statement, uh, uh, it's going to show that I make a decent money, you know? Go ahead, Ben. I think I'll make sure she's okay with me speaking. speaking. But that needs to go to Bob. Okay. Thank you. And for the attorney. Did you want to ask him a question? No, the attorney. Me. Okay. Used to be that they only decided on the reduction or non-reduction by the written letter, and that was it. We had to go by that. That was in right. Nothing yeah. else was submitted. But are we changing the rules, or what's going We're on? We're allowing individuals to give you any additional information or answer any questions you may have. So it's always good when someone's asking for a reduction to be present to show that they're at least uh, able to come forward and answer any questions you may have as, as to why. I mean, that's one of the questions I asked is how long did it take you to clean it up? Because mm -hmm. I think it's important for the board to know. Um, and if you could do it in one day, I think there's a thought that, okay, well, it wasn't so bad mm -hmm. that uh, it could be cleaned up relatively quickly. I think the follow-up questions may be um, asking why you waited. Then there uh, used to be certain stipulations in that letter that have to be, like she said, about the... Yeah. the, the uh, I think we need to be more. It's uh, not in there. No. I, I think the problem we had at the last meeting was that there was just that information, and it wasn't adequate information for you to make a determination. Yeah. We we don't mean to be punitive, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. feel That's... like you started something, left a mess, left the country for a year, right? And then you could have cleaned it up in one day before. So I think the board feels a little uncomfortable. Your plans right. look beautiful. We want to have some new houses like that right right but it makes us feel uncomfortable that we're not following the rules the same for everybody yeah no it's understandable it's uh i i just figure i'd give it give it a try you know <laughs> and you know sir the thing is we we get these requests from a lot of different people and we have a you know an actual right. guideline that says how we go about making that so it's not arbitrary so one person doesn't get favoritism over another or whatever right. so the guideline says you're supposed to actually bring a financial statement and you know show right. us why this would be a hardship right no you. yeah I, I do i do i do understand you know um no problem i i think uh he's saying that it's not a financial hardship okay. yeah uh, you, you was, he's, he's asking for um good faith yeah good will. that he's going forward yeah. and doing something for mm -hmm. that's going to improve the property and would you consider anything? Yeah, that's uh, that's my only question. Uh, it's uh, the 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 cost of the project is going to be seven hundred fifty thousand approximately. Yeah, I got it. So I'm, anything I can do towards the impact fees would would be helpful. Yeah. Unless somebody has a question, I'm going to close the public portion, and the board is free to discuss among themselves. Um, I kind of think I made my point clear. I felt bad that he left us with the mess. But $8,000 seems like a lot for something that could be cleared up in a day. Do you have some questions about that? I, I have a question regarding how far along in the process of permitting and, and 
moving forward with your proposed development? I would like to get started this year. If Say I again? Can. I'd like to get started the building this year. I know you would like to be. <laughs> what I'm asking is how far in the permitting and official paperwork request to do that are you? I would say uh, by the time it gets all approved, it's six months. I, I think what he's asking, if I can, is have you done anything? Have you submitted anything to the city? No, no, I'm just working with, uh, with the engineering right now and, you know, so I can have uh, a plan to submit to the city. No, the, <laughs> oh, he hasn't know, done to, 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 not to coin a phrase, but the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. My request, as the attorney has restated, is have you instigated anything within the framework of officialdom to make this happen? No. 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 Okay. No. Thank you. And even if I pay you, write a check, and when I do start building, you can kind of give me some credit back in the impact fees or, you know, anything We don't can have help. anything to do with impact fees. Yeah, this board fees. doesn't deal with that. We don't deal with impact okay. fees. Anybody else? Question, comment, discussion? No, I just don't feel right about it. Me neither. Because it's not going by our I'd like to hear a motion from the board. You have motion eight or nine that uh, if you so choose. since we don't have a motion. You're the chair. Um, it, it says his request for a fine reduction was given on February 20th of 24. The original case was held. I wasn't paying attention because I don't know I was involved. What would you ask? I understand. Because if that was not done within 60 days of that original. It, no, it came to your last meeting. It came to your last that meeting. That was within this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure that. No, no. We, we brought this one back to for so the board could get additional right. information. Does it give the amount? I don't see that on here. You can adjust that, yes. Well, I don't see an amount. In, in uh, the, motion number nine. The amount, you want to know what the exact What's amount nine? is? It's in your uh, page two of three. It's 8,000 plus. 8,455. Right. No, but how much you proven? It. So what's the, what's the amount? And the total fine is $8,455. 8455 $8, All right, you want me to? I'm waiting for a motion. I'm ready. All right. Um, I move in the case number 22-8000020 to find the respondent, what's her name, Betty Colossi, did correct the violations for the property located at East, doesn't have a number, uh, Street, Lemon Street, uh, but did not pay the fine of the amount of $8,455 and to reject this request for reduction. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Bobby, roll call, please. Mr. Ogle? Yes. Ms. Dr. Matea? Aye. Ms. Archer? Yes. Ms. Atelier? Yes. Mr. Weeks? Yes. Ms. Wade? Yes. Your motion has carried. <coughs> Would you like to summarize for him? Your request has been denied. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry that this didn't work out. It looks like a nice plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do need you to follow the procedures. Yeah, do, do I pay now or well, what do I have to do? Do I got to write a check? Do I pay in advance if you want to stay? All right, all right, let's see. 
be the next case is case C3 in your book, um, and it will be. Oh, wait. No, no. Is Chair the case closed? Wade? Yes. May I ask the attorney a question? Yes. It's out of, that's fine. No, I want to, how exactly are these fines satisfied? Is it cash, a lien, uh, another threatening letter? What, what no, happens? If, if uh, individuals are, in this particular case, are given the opportunity to come before you, now that it is not, uh, since you denied it, they have to pay it within, uh, I believe, within 30 days. Yeah. But how? Either by check. If they don't pay, we do a lien. You do a lien? Yes. Okay. Mr. Weeks, could you pass that along? The yes, city clerk's office would do that automatically. Okay. No. Uh, maybe there's some evidence. It's coming down to you, Bob. Oh, that's why. Yeah, it's heading. Right. It's heading. Oh, it's, it's, it's going a little bit slow. Yes, I'm sorry. Are we all set? Right. Case. The next I case, I believe point. we have some folks here for. This is case C3. It's listed as 23-8. Zero 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 nine six. Nathan Nguyen, did I do okay? Six twelve Lincoln Avenue. This is a vacant lot. They are requesting a fine reduction, and I only just got this information today, so it's going to take me just a minute to read up on this. Okay. And I'm assuming the board is in the same spot. Yeah. So if you'll give us just a minute to read it. Okay, thank you. And then we'll give you all a chance. Mm -hmm. I did note that you were uh, sworn in.
Some of these are in here two times. Um, we're going to have Officer Boone make. Uh... I'm right. I'm ready. Uh, Corporal Anthony Boone, Tarpon Springs Police Department, in reference uh, case two three eight zero 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 nine six. This is the Wynn property at six twelve Lincoln Avenue here in Tarpon Springs. Um, on six twenty four twenty twenty three, there was the duty maintenance private property violation, a nuisance condition, and the nuisance pro prohibition uh, violations. You guys uh, set a fine for $75 a day on 7-13, which would have been July 13, 2023. Uh, the property came into compliance. I inspected it, and it was out of compliance for 19 days, which makes the fine after the satisfaction fee $1,435. In this case, I will say um, I listened to many phone calls from the daughter to my secretary, Miss New, uh, from the time that it was in the compliance. Uh, I inspected it multiple times since then, and it's still been in compliance. I believe there was some issues. They were also working on trying to get her power of attorney and how that was going to happen with him being out of the country. So he's finally here. We had them write this up and it's all been presented to you and I'll let it work with them. But today the property is still in compliance. So there was a little question of, we, we saw the property outlines of which property or did they have both of those? They had both, parcels. but they weren't sure. They cleaned one side. And as soon as this goes back to our, my protege, uh, Stoner, once it was identified that this is still your property, it was cleaned as well. And both properties still remain clean today. Thank you. Hmm? Do, do you have a do question Stafford. for us? Uh, I think he, uh, according to procedures, he gets to ask a question next and then we will. Okay. Just questions at this time. Are you here from Vietnam? Yes. Thank okay. you for coming. <coughs> and this and you so this property belongs to you. Yes. And this is your daughter. Yeah, my daughter. And she's helping you in mm -hmm. between all of this. Do you li live in Pinellas Park? Is that what that says? Okay. Just so we understand things. Would do you have just a question for uh, Officer okay. Boone at this time? Uh, I have a little question, but I, I speak uh, not very well, but um, I do the business over here about 30 some years. Uh, long service, 16 years, something like that. Do I know you, will that. you explain to him but just yeah, question at this time, I not know. present his case? Yeah, but you know, before I bought the property. No, sir? He didn't have any questions apparently. At this time, <laughs> do you have just a question for the officer? Then you I, get to tell us your I case. I don't have a question because I. I okay, no I, question at this yeah. time. I'll get back yeah. to you. But. Did someone on the board have a question for the officer? There you go. They refer to a property on Stafford. 
Is this all one property, the Lincoln address, or does it have a separate address? No, it has one address. And then the photos in the back. Yes. Shows their property. And you can see how it's divided. You have a, a lot five and a lot 20. That's their entire lot. So is that a whole corner lot that goes from Lincoln down Harrison to Saxon? Correct. And if you look at it from a north view, the south lot was clean and that little bit on the north side was not clean. So that's why Ms. Stoner didn't put it into uh, compliance. All righty. If you don't have another question for the officer, now you get your turn to tell us your story. Thank you. Okay, um, because I bought that property and uh, I see the old owner that not cleaning up maybe a couple of years. Okay. I see the lot big, you know, bunch, whole bunch over there. But I don't have time. Have time. I go to, uh, I call the company to go to survey the property and I, I, I you know, I received from call from Vietnam, my mom sick. Very sick. I say my daughter, my my son, my daughter stay over here and take care of the property. I back to the, over there, okay. But sometimes they call back the uh, daddy. She they need to clean up uh, uh, six to well Lincoln Avenue. Okay, clean. <coughs> Go to get the long man to clean up. But the city don't don't say the, um, clean up in the safe for That's what they don't know. After that. One week, and they receive, they receive the, the CD note, and need to clean up and set forth, and they call the lungs, the, 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 the tree service, uh, to clean up. Take about one week, the tree service come clean up, but cost about $2,600. I pay for, yeah, that's all. But uh, right now, CD uh, say, uh, too late. I don't know, I, I, don't, have, I don't have questions, CD, and uh, help me do that. No, may, may I um, add to that as well? I, well, we'll need you to speak in the microphone. If you come up, and I, I didn't know that you were sworn in earlier. I, Go ahead. Yes, she was sworn in. Okay, I just uh, wanted to add some context to that. So first, I'm sorry, Newt had advised that it would be in my best interest to get power of attorney, um, but due through to some other family matters, we haven't really established that at this point in time. Um, but as my father had already said that, um, you know, when he left, it was basically, you know, hey, you know, kids watch over the property. And from what we knew, it was technically two pieces of property, just all in one big row. So when I received the notification, the initial letter said 612, leading me to believe it's the front facing or the Lincoln property. And after I sent my brother out there a couple times, um, poor um, Officer Brune had to listen to all of our voicemails going back between me and Cindy. Um, once she notified me that it was the Safford side that needed to be cleaned up because we owned the entire strip, that's when we had somebody come out the next day, had somebody clean up the property, and then us and my brother also didn't know that we had to ask for a reinspection, so I also initiated that as well. But all of that was done within like about nine days or so, maybe less than that. So I just feel that, um, I mean, other than the small financial hardship of just being on social security at this point for him, it was more of there are laws, there are rules, we understand that completely to keep the city of Tarpon beautiful, clean, and safe. But I feel that if I was told that the Safford side was part of our property and that was what needed to be addressed, I would have gotten that done a lot faster and we would have been not fine at all. Um, so I think it was a little bit of a misunderstanding. I will refer to the good doctor here. He said that it's probably not good of me to assume that, you know, same case number, same parcel number, I assumed that it was 612 that they were asking about, which is why I kept calling and saying, hey, we cleaned up the property more than once, but for some reason it's not in compliance. You know, tell me exactly what you need and, you know, keep the grass low, get the stumps out. And my brother is telling me there's no stumps on 612. So I think there was just a lot of miscommunication, miscommunication there. And that's kind of where, well, why we're here just to ask if there's any way the board would consider a, a reduction for that misunderstanding. So your request for fine reduction is based more on you weren't given the 
correct property identification than a financial basis? Uh, more correct, uh, more information versus the that We only have that for our information. Okay, then, That's yes. why I'm asking that. We have no information about a financial, need. Financial, correct, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, so now we can ask. Uh, first, <laughs> Officer Boone, do you have a question for them? I do not. They, Thank they've worked a lot with us. Thank you. And it's, you're pointing out that it is to, in compliance still. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. So uh, you were handling this property for your parents while they were in Vietnam. Correct. Did you know that the property was owned by your family that included lot four, uh, five and 20? Did you know the whole lot was? I knew that the lot was a strip and that it was two pieces of property. Um, but when I received, yes. I received, that's yes. Okay. But you knew that was your property. Correct. So you have to maintain your property. Correct. So if I built a house on Safford Avenue and someone told me it was 612 Lincoln, I'm going to go to 612 Lincoln and not expecting to see a house there because my house is on Safford side. And I believe that maybe there was uh, confusion there also because there used to be a property on 612. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's actually an address versus Safford is just Safford Ave. I will say again, the assumption thing really uh, messed me up because on the later notifications from the city, it did say Safford Ave, but on the original correspondence and some of the letters and violation notices after, it still says 612. And actually on my case, it still says 612 Lincoln. So but it's still your responsibility. Correct. Yes, absolutely. And I just wish I would have known it's the Safford side. Otherwise, I yes, absolutely. Are there any uh, financial considerations that you included for a reduction? I did not include any financial. Um, we did bring the 2023 tax, his taxes for 2023. Um, but I mean, for the board, he's on Social Security at this point and living off of any type of investments like what he intends to do with um, the lots at some point. Yes? Question? You almost feel like the, if, if you don't have any questions for each other, that I'm gonna close the public portion and the board gets to discuss. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like it was partially the city's issue that Definitely. they didn't correctly identify the two properties. And I have to say I respect that they got it all cleaned up in 10 days yes. and have maintained it that way. Our question comes back to a little bit of a legal one. In our rules for consideration, it asks us to look at need. They haven't expressed a need or not in the things that, that, that they gave us, yes. but did the city err enough that that should be not included? Well, I think the factors that the board needs to consider is number one, that you've already mentioned, uh, it has been maintained. Number two, they said there was confusion and what is supportive of them is the fact that once they found out what it was, and they right took away. care of it. And they did spend $2,600 to, to for correct that. that. Mm -hmm. I think based on, on the city's position, they're also saying these people cooperated with us as soon as they became aware there was some confusion. And there is a little confusion based on the two addresses yes. um, as to what went on. So those are um, circumstances that the board can consider uh, for a fine reduction. Okay. And, and again, as you've mentioned before, the idea here is compliance. compliance not they also, right. And they also have spent more than the fine on correcting it. If the board doesn't have any further questions, then I hope someone will. May uh, I, I have another question. You do have a question? Yeah. Um, the cost for the city was. Uh, they have no we have to. That was not included on here. It <laughs> is. Uh, let's see. You got it. No, it wasn't. You have it? Air cost to the city? No. There's no. Bobby has it. It was inspected the day that I got the call. It was inspected by me, okay. And at that time, I made twenty dollars an hour, and it probably took me thirty minutes to go there and come back and do a report. So the okay. satisfaction fee of ten dollars is that that, would that be, amount? Yes, okay. sir. What's the one thousand four hundred thirty-five? That's the fine, seventy-five dollars a day. 
It was seventy-five dollars yeah. a day, Time and they were out. Pity in that much um, an errors with this. I, I just I, this is the second one that says miscommunication, misunderstanding with the city, and I, I can't believe the city makes that kind of mistakes all the time. I, so I, I can only tell you that Not the city. They well. did. <laughs> I, I can only tell you that the city uh, certainly uh, worked with these people to try to clarify any issues. Um, we have corrected um, and maintain a very good, as you have seen, code department since changes have been made, and we've been on top of those things. So those are considerations. There is sometimes miscommunication in this kind of situation. Especially when English isn't the primary language. I'll make a motion. <laughs> I move in case <laughs> number... She was handling it, but still. Two three eight zero 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 nine six to find the responses did correct the violations for the property located at 612 Lincoln Avenue, but did not pay the fine in the amount of $1,425, and to approve the request for reduction and reduce the fine of $1,425 mm -hmm. to $10, to cover costs to the city, inclusive or plus the administrative costs, and order the respondent pay the reduced fine amount of $10 within 14 calendar days of this order, and if not paid within 14 calendar days of this order, the original fine amount will be due. Second. Roll call, please, Bobby. Mr. Ogle? Yes. Dr. Matea? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Mrs. Tillyard? Yes. Mr. Weeks? Yes. This way? Yes. Your motion carries. And he's going to explain to you what we just approved for you. They have approved the reduction of the fine down to $10. You have 14 days to pay those $10. Please pay that within the 14 days, otherwise it reverts back. Uh, to the $1,425. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. There are no other cases before the board at this time. You do have some minutes in your packet that we need to approve. Sorry. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a break. Thank you. Would you mind like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. We can do this uh, second, anybody? Second. And we can do it by voice, voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, there's no one here for make public comments. Anybody on the board need to make any comments? How do How's you, Citizens how Academy coming? Of, uh, the process for a fine reduction. How do they get the information? That the, what to present in terms of, because we've seen a lot of these and the information is never here. Yes, well, we're working on that to make sure that that information is, is given to them. It is a little confusing for uh, a lay person to look at this and know exactly what to give. And that's really why the encouragement is to have the people present. I think uh, I think I would recommend that we change uh, that section that says that, uh, they can't provide information here. I think it's more important for them to provide that information because you're determining not just the information but the credibility of individuals that come before you and the reasoning why. I mean, th this is a perfect example that you needed to hear what they had to say, that it wasn't something where they were just skirting and saying, oh, we're not gonna follow. They, were, they thought they had. And I think it's important to, to, for you all 
to see individuals that do that and judge the credibility when you're discussing a fine reduction. Also, I thought it was important to know that this was not something that just, you know, they went out and took five minutes. They paid $2,600 to do that. Correct. I think that's an important factor for you all to consider when you do these things. And I think the more information, the better, not just a form uh, letter, because I don't, I, don't, I don't think that gets you anywhere. And once that we have turned them down, for example, the previous guy, can he reappeal that? He's no. done. But that circumstances were different, right? Yes. So those circumstances are the ones where we talk about you need to he present financial information. After being right. told to clean it right. up and didn't do it. And and so where there could be some miscommunication alleged, in that one there wasn't uh, communication miscommunication presented to you. Correct. Um, so and I, But I did think it was important to have him come before here, explain his circumstances, and explain um, what was going on on the property too. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you consider these pieces of property, you wanna consider what's gonna happen to them. It's not just gonna be a vacant lot that's sitting there. Um, so I think it's important though that people don't feel when they see this process taking place here that it's arbitrary. Right. And that we make decisions, you know, kind of like on the fly. Yeah. I think there needs to be Yes. Some kind of set things, and that we they're always extenuating. Exactly, there, yeah. there's set criteria, but there is still gray in there. You need to consider certain factors that you may not be aware right. of. Right, exactly. A lot of times we may see these properties, for example, in a situation where there's a significant fine, but the person who uh, caused that fine uh, ultimately was selling the property, and but you can't sell the property with a huge fine on it and the person who's coming in is gonna develop it or do whatever. Um, and so in those, you, those are circumstances you have to right. consider. And we've right? seen those before, and but, we've, we've right. acted accordingly. So it's important for all that information. So I, I agree with you, I don't think, I think you need that basic information. Mm -hmm. But if it is a financial hardship, which is probably more in need of the documents than anything else. Because right. if I'm saying I have financial hardship, I can't pay this fine, then I need to establish mm -hmm. that documentation to your satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with what you did at the last meeting, which is we want additional information, or more importantly, we want somebody present. I think it's important to have somebody present because it shows their real uh, reasoning uh, for having a fine reduction. The other thing too, though, I believe, Jules, is there a section in there that says something about repeat offender? Yes. And that's the thing that I feel is really important for us to get a handle on when we're doing this deliberation. Because sometimes these people have had two and three offenses mm -hmm. on the that's same nice. property. We will try to make sure that that information is always provided to you. Normally the city will take a position uh, as a general matter that if somebody has violated before and they violate again on that property, that that would, not, that would be one that the city would oppose a reduction. Now, that's being said in a vacuum because it could be one again that has a huge fine amount. I mean, the, the thing about these properties that people need to understand is the city isn't trying to move forward on you know foreclosing properties no. because the city's not in the property business. The idea is to get compliance and you don't wanna be a neighbor where there is a problem. Oh, I mean, no. we do have some of those cases and we're proceeding on some of those cases where there is a problem. We tried, they won't listen, we've taken them to court, the judge has made orders, they still won't do it, right. so then we have to move to foreclose on the property. That's the last alternative that the city wants to take. I mean, we just do not want that. We just want people to do the right the thing. Right, just do maintain, the right thing. like you, you would want your neighbor. And right. one but thing that I stress I, is I stress for people to come for their reduction. I, I do wanna say that, um, we have a process here by which we look at these people and evaluate that process. That process wasn't followed today at it was, all. It no, was not completely please listen, followed. Please let me speak. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but the problem is, is that that gentleman that was here that did not get it does have an avenue for going to another board and getting a reduction. And that is the empathy problem. The empathy problem does not lie with us. It's a lawyer's, it's a legal issue 
whether or not we approve or disapprove of any reduction. And that reduction is based on the law and what it says, not our guilt, not our innocence, nothing else. They want to go and ask if the $18,000 can be reduced, the Board of Commissioners, they can do it. And they have done it, and they do get reductions. This idea that we are continuously going after people and making them do something mm. that is not their will is because it's the law. Mm -hmm. If we do not consider the possibility that they have another avenue, then we're, we're wrong. They do have another avenue. And we need to deal with the legal issues of what has stated in the law as reference to what we are going to do with them. He's referring to in the past we have seen a couple properties. Nobody came. We issued the fine. Right. And then they went to the city commission and had the fines removed. And I, I have seen that, and that is, a, that. that is something that's brought forward by a commissioner um, and yes. by a majority of the commission. It's not part of the code enforcement process. That's part of what the commission uh, has chosen to do in certain circumstances. That is correct. That, uh, that summarized, I think, but what that's you not were automatic. Saying. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That's that's not an automatic process. Okay. And if you don't have someone to champion that position, that it doesn't automatically come before the board. Got so it. I didn't want to think. Uh, so there is. There's, technically, not a process for me if I was, like the first gentleman. There's not a process to appeal this action without getting um, uh, having a commissioner adopt that particular issue and champion that cause. But it is possible, yes. We've had people come before us that have, have had a property that had huge amount of fines on it, and they said hardship, didn't actually produce any documents to prove hardship, and turn around and sell the property for a million dollars or more, and the fine really was a pittance compared to that. And uh, I don't think we did, we did those particularly but they have gotten fine reductions from the Commission and then again that usually happens in the circumstance where you're uh, transferring it to a new owner and you're not trying to um, punish the new owner who is coming no. in and cleaning the property up and doing those things yeah. that is correct but there are, there are circumstances where individuals do not pay the fines and the fines stay on there the pro the problem is the fine keeps running because no one's in compliance. Right. And the idea here is to get compliance. Absolutely. And so that that's the goal that you have. Otherwise, these cases could go right to uh, the criminal courts and they could be handled through the um, citation violations, which only results in a fine and not compliance. So if you go in front of the county court, the judge will issue a fine, but he will not, he or she will not issue uh, the ability to have come into compliance. So that's why you don't, you know, you have the alternative to have a board like this established. Mm. If you live next to a property that's deplorable, it can, it affects you oh, tremendously. Sure. So when, when we do the kind of deliberation we do here, it's because keeping that in mind, Absolutely. that people live near this and, you know, they, they're... But then, then again, I mean, when you read your beginning part of the reason why the board exists and why the law uh, provides for it, it is, you know, the emphasis is compliance. Right. And it's, and it's supposed to be a uh, opportunity for an individual to come before their peers and an opportunity to look at those facts and circumstances, including hardship, as was mentioned, sure. as to why they could not come into compliance. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's, a, it's supposed to be an effective, inexpensive way. Right. Because otherwise, like you said, you hire a lawyer, you you come before, and, and you're you're arguing those points. Mm -hmm. um, it still ends up, ironically, it probably still ends up costing those people money. It's just instead of going to pay the fine, it's paying for representation. Yeah, yeah we have seen that. We have seen that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to thank. Unless there's anything else, I want to thank everybody for coming. And the board is adjourned. <laughs>